Hello and welcome to another InventRight TV show. My name is Andrew Krauss. I'm one of the co-founders. Our other co-founder is Stephen Key. And together and with all our coaches, we've been coaching and mentoring inventors for the last 21 years. We've had students in 65 countries. And every month we have students licensing products. This is part of a series where we're interviewing our fantastic coaches. So we have Kirk on, Kirk Highest, and Kirk is one of our amazing coaches. And we're going to talk about um, ADHD, inventing, um, we're going to talk about uh, mental perspective, we're going to talk about having a lot of ideas, what happens when you have a lot of ideas. Because as Kirk was telling me just before this interview, that he feels they're all kind of intertwined. So this is a great uh, way for you guys to get to know our coach a little bit, um, but more importantly, we're going to share some great advice. He's going to talk about coaching his students and things that happen there and how he handle it. So you guys are going to get some great tips here. So Kirk, welcome. Thank you for having me, Andrew. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. You, you mentioned to me, and I, I've said this before too, that uh, creativity and a little bit of uh, attention deficit or hyperactivity or what is different for different people, a, a large portion of our students have a little bit of tension, you know, focusing, hard time focusing on things. And that's pretty common for creative people. I don't want to stereotype or anything, but mm -hmm. um, have you found that to be true? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I'm the same way. I mean, you know, I, I consider myself, I have a little bit of ADHD, which most inventors, I think, do. That's why we work on we get one idea in our head and then we get about halfway through it and then you want to start working on your other idea and then you get another one and you start working on the other idea. Yeah. So trying to focus on one idea is sometimes difficult. But you know what's really, what I love is that our coaches are all inventors. So, you know, when you've been through some of the same struggles and you figured out how to deal with them and now you're helping our students deal with these same issues, it's great. It's not like we take... Um, a script and somebody that was in corporate America go, here, you're, you're an event right coach now. <laughs> we don't do that, right? Right. Um, right. So how do you handle it when somebody comes to you and they're new and they're like, I got 100 ideas, I got 200 ideas, or I got 10 ideas? You know, um, now that they might say that, but a lot of people are really currently obsessed with one product. But how do you handle it when people are uh, open to working on any ideas, which actually we love, because then you can pick and choose from them, right? Yeah, oh, exactly. And th those are that's the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but most people do have multiple ideas, and you just have to focus on one, especially the first time, the first idea that you have. And, and most of the time, the first idea we have is it's our baby. You know, it's your it's the one that you've been thinking about for years and you and you you know, you've done everything to 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 try to bring it to fruition um but then you you have to be mentally prepared for those roadblocks that you get and you know with with licensing uh multiple products at once you know you have a hard time uh dealing with uh uh that kind of thing so um sorry about that well kinda... you know we have we have plenty of our students that um eventually they get to working on multiple products, maybe even during their first membership with us. Um, but people definitely, what I tell folks is, look, when I see our students working on their second project, it goes two to 10 times faster because they went through it with another product. And now everything is that much more familiar. So working on multiple products is definitely possible and a lot of our students do it, but we don't do it out of the gate with a brand new student, do we? Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't because it's important. You, I mean you have to focus on your product uh, and on learning the, the steps of, uh, you know, of our system. So if you're trying to juggle two or three products at once going through and learning the actual 10 steps, you're going to have a really hard time with trying to focus, especially when you're, when you're going from step one, studying the marketplace, it's really hard to, to study the marketplace on three separate products. I mean, you can do that later on when you're more seasoned and you know the steps, right. but the first, the first time you go through it, it's really important to to start with one product, and then if you have multiple products, it's best to start with the most simple product that you have. Yeah, because you can yeah. spend more time learning the course than you can with with actually uh, developing your product. Yeah, I always tell people you're doing two things when you're a new student with us. Is one, the coach is making sure you do and say everything right in your project, so you have the highest chance of success. But also, 
you're learning this in licensing process, the event right licensing process for the first time, so you can apply, apply it to future products. So be patient with yourself. And so, but not every, all of our viewers are becoming event right students. So what is your advice if people have a ton of ideas and they want to work on a bunch at the same time, or they have a hard time focusing? Like they start working on it, then they start getting into the less fun stuff of licensing, you know, all the de making a sell sheet, making your list of companies, doing the research, not the fun like prototyping or whatever people think is fun. But what do you suggest to people that keep, like, they work on another one, but then they don't finish it and it sits there and they start working on a different one and a different one. And we see a lot of, a lot of our students are like, that's where I was, but that's not where I want to be anymore. What would you advise your viewers that they, they, they see and recognize that pattern in themselves? I, I would just advise them to start with one and finish it. Start with one and finish it. Go through the steps and focus on that one because, like you said, it's a lot easier to do multiple products after your first one, you know, yeah. because then you know the steps. But you got you have to stay focused, and you, and you're right about that. Is because when 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 the the inventors actually get to the point of building the hit list and calling the companies, I mean, you're almost ready to start your your idea, but your next idea. But the thing is, is that when you're building your hit list and you're calling companies, that takes some time, you know, and it takes a lot of focus and you have to follow up with, with them. So even with your first one, I wouldn't start on a second one until you're following up, following up with the, with the, uh, the, the companies that you've already contacted. Yeah. And that way you're, you're all, you're through it. You, you went through your hit list. Now you're on the follow-up stage. Then you can go on to your next idea or multiple ideas. But I like to make it fun. Like before, when I developed my wrench, um, before InventRight, um, I started on it. And I, I put too much pressure on myself. And it, it literally, I said it took years off of my life because it wasn't fun anymore. It well, was, now, yeah, you know, well, I'd love to hear about that. I was just going to ask you about your wrench that you licensed. What, what did you do wrong with that that stressed you out, that took forever? Everything. And everything. everything. <laughs> I okay, thanks for being patents. honest. I, yeah, I filed multiple patents, uh, uh, spent a ton of money. Um, I was really not enjoying the things that I used to enjoy. I spent all the time on my invention. And, and you know, my personal life suffered. My family life wow. suffered. And it was, you know, it was, it was a lot of work. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was daunting. And then once I became a student at InventRight, I, it, that all changed. Just because I was focused on one thing and I, I had more balance and I, I wanted to make it more fun. And, and, and it's a lot more fun. And that's what I tell my students now is you got to have fun with it. You know, some students will go and they'll, they'll go through the course fast and they'll do it. But some people want to, some students want to absorb the material. They might only do it a, a, a step at a time instead of doing three or four. Right. You know, it just depends on the student. But my advice is don't put pressure on yourself that that you're that you're like losing sleep over it. Well, how so how how did it become more fun? How do you make it more fun for your students? How did you make it more fun for yourself? Well, first of all, I wasn't spending you know, with licensing. I'm not spending as much money because I'm writing PPAs instead of uh, filing patents. And, yeah. and that will that will drain you when you when you when you're thinking about finances and all the money and you owe this and that it, it, it gets rough. Uh, but you know, with, with the licensing end of it and you're doing PPAs and you're learning the steps and then once you learn the steps then it's just a lot easier because there's a roadmap that you have now, like I didn't have the roadmap before and I did everything, but it was, it was all backwards. And now since I can stay more focused in inventing, it's just a lot more fun. So do you find that yourself back when you were a student, your students now, um, they, when they have a very clear process, all the non non fun not is nothing is going to be as much fun as coming up with an idea, right? Right. So like doing your research, making your list of companies, your sell sheet, you know, building your LinkedIn network, knowing how to reach out on the phone, and then doing all that stuff. None of that is much as much fun as coming up with an idea. Um, right. But it sounds to me like what you're saying is for yourself and for your students, the structure that InventRight gives, and you don't have to become an InventRight student to follow our steps. You could get our book, One Simple Idea, and you could, those are the same steps. Now, you don't have a coach holding your hand, looking at the product. You, know, you could ask a question to a book. It's not going to say anything back to you, but a coach will. But so our, our, I'm trying to summarize, and I'm not sure I'm accurate. This, did the structure give you a sense of peace 
Yes, it, it actually did. And, and it's, I'm glad you mentioned one simple idea because I was looking for books on inventing before InventRight. And I found that I found Stephen Key's book, you know, one simple idea. And I read that and I was just amazed. I was just like, this is, this is it. This is, you know, I have to become a student yeah. because everything in this book, I want to learn more. I was on the YouTube videos. I did everything, but I got a lot accomplished just with the book. I mean, cause if, if, you know, if, if you, you know, watch all the videos and you read the book and you read his other, uh, Stephen's other books, you can do it without signing up to be a student. But, you know, the structure is what helped me really focus with my ADHD. It really helped me get one task done, and then I got the next task done, and then I got the other assignments. And, you know, it's like building a foundation. It's like building a house. You got to build the, you you know, you have to have the foundation before you can start. You know, you can't put the roof on until the foundation's done and the walls are up. So that's the way that I look at it is, is the structure of it really helped me, and it was more fun. And then another thing is, is really nice is every time I got uh, something accomplished, I felt proud of myself. I was like, wow, I got that done. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you do the research, you get that done. And then you study the marketplace, you get that done. You know, you're, you're doing your patent search, you know, you get that done and you're confident. Then your sell sheet comes and, and, and that, and then you feel good about that. So it's like these milestones that you pass and, and everybody should be proud of themselves when they hit that milestone. Yeah, milestones. you know, and I always tell our new students, I say, look, your, your family and friends probably don't understand inventing and they definitely don't understand licensing. So make sure to share all those milestones, to share all those successes along the way with your coach because they get it and they will mm -hmm. tell you when you're like, this is great. Like you, and you're like, yeah, I guess I did do that. Or when you don't give yourself credit sometimes when you're on your own. Um, and I say, don't just celebrate standing at the top of the mountain. I got a licensing deal. Celebrate all those little victories along the way. And people's main focus is that current product they're working on. But I always remind them, look, you're also learning the process. Do you, have, do you want to come up with other ideas if you don't have other ones? Or do you have other ones? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, keep that in mind. Whenever you feel like you're struggling with project number one, realize the next second time you do it, so much easier. I'm not saying it's going to be a piece of cake. You're not going to come across some different things. You didn't come across number one, but it's so much easier. So, But I really like your tip. Celebrate all those little victories along the way. And that's that one. That's hard to do on your own because nobody gets it. And then right. you don't know if you're victorious. You don't know if it's good or not. Right. And your friends and family are tired of hearing you talk about it. I know mine right. were. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody, they didn't, like you said, they don't get it. It's hard. You know, you, right. once you go through it, you get it. But you know, uh, when you're explaining all the, the, the ins and outs, to, they're just, they get tired of hearing it. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think when you see your students struggling and you, can, you let them know, hey, I struggle with staying focused too, but I've got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you can recognize that in them, you know, and you yeah, can help exactly. them. And so I love that. I think that's Yeah, great. exactly. And, you know, and I've, and I've had a couple students that, that we talked and, and, you know, they, they put a lot of pressure on, them, on themselves. And we all do as inventors. We want to yeah. get it done. We want we want to get everything done. We want to call companies, but sometimes it, it, it gets a little be a little bit too much. And I always be like, hey, take the weekend off. You know, just put your notebooks away, put your prototypes away, and go ride a bike or go fishing yeah. or do something. Get your mind off of it for a couple of days because yeah. you can't do it seven days a week. You want to, you know, because we all wake up in the middle of the night thinking of our ideas. I mean, I, I think this is part of being an inventor. But you have to somehow learn how to shut it off just even if it's for a couple of days. Yeah, but th and there is a difference between thinking about your invention and actually working on it. I think a lot mm -hmm. of inventors just keep thinking and thinking and thinking, and it gets exhausting. And then you're like, I've been thinking, but nothing's getting done. And, and I think what I like about our 10 steps, whether you're following one simple idea or when, pe when we're coaching people, is, is uh, you, you're, just, you're getting it done a little bit at a time, and you're giving yourself credit for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's what every inventor needs is just to check it off one bit at a time. Otherwise, you have a sense of a state of overwhelm, which is what you mm -hmm. were talking about with your story. It is. You know, and the baby yeah. steps, like, you know, just step by step baby steps because you'll get there. Yeah. You, know, you have to crawl before you can walk. Yeah. You know, so well, it's. Thank you so much, Kirk. You're amazing. Thank you for thank being you. a coach. Thank you for helping your students. And do you have anything you want to say in closing? I just, I just, uh, I love being a coach and I love helping students and, you know, everybody just keep inventing. All right. Take care, everybody. See you next time. See ya. Bye. All right. Bye.
there's a great idea in each of us. But it's truly magical to see it come to life. Sharing your creativity with the world has never been easier. We can help.